Sandra Locke tragically dies after revealing Clint Eastwood's painful and indifferent secret. Sandra Locke was born Sandra Louise Smith on May 28, 1944, in Shelbyville, Tennessee, a small town known for its rich history and southern charm. Her early life was marked by both challenges and aspirations that would shape her into the strong, determined woman she became. Locke's parents, Raymond Smith and Pauline Bain, were not together for long, and their separation occurred soon after her birth. This early disruption in her family life meant that Sandra grew up without the presence of her biological father, a situation that may have contributed to her sense of independence and resilience from a young age. Pauline Bain, Locke's mother, later remarried, and Sandra took the last name of her stepfather, Alfred Locke, a carpenter who worked hard to support the family. The influence of her stepfather and mother's marriage added stability to her life, though it also introduced new dynamics. Sandra was particularly close to her mother, who encouraged her to pursue her dreams despite the difficulties they faced. Growing up in a modest household, Sandra developed a strong work ethic and an appreciation for the arts, which would later play a crucial role in her career. Locke's early education took place in Shelbyville, where she attended public schools. From a young age, she demonstrated a natural talent for performance and creativity. She was an intelligent and ambitious student, often excelling in her studies and participating in school plays and local theater productions. These early experiences on stage ignited a passion for acting that would stay with her throughout her life. Her involvement in these activities not only honed her acting skills but also provided her with a sense of purpose and direction. During her teenage years, Sandra Locke faced the typical challenges of adolescence, but her ambition and desire to leave a mark on the world set her apart from her peers. Despite the conventional expectations of young women in the 1950s and 1960s, Sandra was determined to pursue a career in the arts. She was not content with the idea of a traditional life confined to the roles of wife and mother, which were often expected of women in her time. Instead, she dreamed of a life on stage and screen, where she could express herself and explore the complexities of human emotion. Sandra's ambition led her to Nashville, Tennessee, where she attended Middle Tennessee State University. Although she initially studied drama and speech, her interests quickly broadened, and she became involved in various creative pursuits. Her time at university was marked by a deepening commitment to her craft, and she began to see acting not just as a passion but as a viable career path. Locke's natural beauty and talent were evident to those around her and she quickly became a standout figure in local theater circles. While at university, Sandra Locke worked tirelessly to support herself, taking on various jobs to pay for her education and living expenses. Her determination and work ethic were evident in everything she did, and she never let financial hardships deter her from pursuing her dreams. She was known for her dedication to her studies and her unwavering focus on her goals. This period of her life was characterized by a relentless pursuit of excellence, both academically and artistically. The early 1960s were a time of significant cultural and social change in the United States, and Locke was very much aware of the shifting landscape around her. The burgeoning civil rights movement, the rise of feminism, and the counterculture of the 1960s all influenced her worldview. These societal changes resonated with Locke's sense of independence and desire to break free from traditional gender roles. She was inspired by the stories of strong, independent women and sought to embody these qualities in her own life and career. After graduating from university, Sandra Locke made the bold decision to pursue her acting career full-time. This was a significant turning point in her life as it required her to leave behind the familiarity of Tennessee and venture into the competitive world of Hollywood. Her decision to pursue acting was not without its challenges, but Locke's determination and passion for the craft propelled her forward. She knew that the path she had chosen would be difficult, but she was prepared to face any obstacles that came her way. Sandra Locke's career took a significant leap forward with her role in the film adaptation of Carson McCullough's novel, the Heart is a Lonely Hunter, 1968. In this film, Locke portrayed the character of Mick Kelly, a young girl with a passion for music, struggling with the complexities of adolescence in a segregated southern town. Her portrayal of Mick was both nuanced and evocative, 
earning her critical acclaim and a nomination for the Golden Globe Award for Best Supporting Actress. This role demonstrated Locke's ability to bring depth to her characters and set the stage for her future success in Hollywood. One of the defining aspects of Sandra Locke's career was her collaboration with Clint Eastwood. Their professional relationship began with The Gauntlet, 1977, a film directed by Eastwood in which Locke starred opposite him. Their chemistry on screen was palpable, and the film's success led to several more collaborations. The Gauntlet was notable for its high-octane action sequences and witty dialogue, and Locke's performance as a street-smart prostitute added a layer of complexity to the narrative. Following this, Locke starred in Every Which Way But Loose, 1978, and its sequel, Any Which Way You Can, 1980. In these films, she played the role of a country singer and love interest to Eastwood's character, demonstrating her versatility as an actress. The success of these films solidified Locke's status as a prominent actress in the late 1970s and early 1980s. Her collaborations with Eastwood also extended to the outlaw Josie Wales, 1976, and Bronco Billy, 1980, showcasing her range across different genres, from westerns to comedy. Aside from her collaborations with Eastwood, Locke also made a mark with other significant roles. In Willard, 1971, a psychological horror film about a man who befriends rats, Locke's role as a sympathetic character brought a touch of humanity to the otherwise macabre storyline. Locke's role in Sudden Impact, 1983, another film in which she starred alongside Clint Eastwood, was a notable highlight of her career. In this film, Locke played the character of Jennifer Spencer, a woman seeking justice for a traumatic event in her past. Her performance was widely praised, and the film's tagline, Go Ahead, Make My Day, became iconic. Sudden Impact was a commercial success and added to Locke's impressive filmography. In addition to her acting career, Sandra Locke explored directing. Her directorial debut came with Rat Boy, 1986, a film she also starred in. The film, a dark comedy about a young man who befriends a deformed rat boy, showcased Locke's unique vision and storytelling skills. Though it received mixed reviews, it demonstrated her versatility and ambition in the film industry. Locke's ability to navigate both sides of the camera highlighted her multifaceted talent. Locke's career was not without its controversies. Her personal and professional relationship with Clint Eastwood ended in a highly publicized legal battle, which included claims of breach of contract and disputes over their joint projects. Despite these challenges, Locke continued to work in the industry and remained a prominent figure in Hollywood. Her resilience and determination in the face of personal and professional difficulties reflected her strength as an actress and filmmaker. Sandra Locke died on November 3, 2018, from a cardiac arrest related to metastatic breast cancer. A lifelong non-smoker Locke practiced transcendental meditation and worked out with weights, though she hated running. In September 1990, she confirmed reports that she had breast cancer. Due to factors in my personal life, I have sustained two years of extreme and unnecessary stress, which my doctors tell me has been my enemy, Locke said at the time. She added that Eastwood never communicated with her after her diagnosis. He doesn't care if I live or die. Locke underwent a double mastectomy at Cedars Sinai Medical Center, followed by chemotherapy. During treatment, she began dating Scott Kinneen, born September 10, 1961, in Long Beach, California, an intern assigned to perform the post-surgical checkup. Unfazed by their 17-year age difference, and that Locke was only three years younger than his mother they soon went public with the romance, dining at paparazzi hotspot Spago on one of their early dates in November 1990. Kinneen moved in with her in the spring of 1991. She called it a real, supportive, and equal relationship. In 2015, after a 25-year period of apparent remission, Locke's cancer returned and metastasized to her bones.